Hey guys and welcome back to Clinical Physio with me, Phil Richards. In this video we're going to look at effectively testing resisted movements of the thoracic spine to see if the muscles in the area are weak or painful. When doing resisted tests we want to think of two key things, power, which we rate on the Oxford scale between 0 and 5, and pain. With this in mind, we're going to go straight into the next video. Let's get clinical. So now we're going to look at resisted tests of the thoracic spine. And we're going to be performing left rotation and right rotation. We won't be including flexion and extension. The reason why we don't include it is because it's very cumbersome to test these. It doesn't really give us the accuracy we're after. If you did want to look at those planes of motion in more isolation, you could always do functional tests. For example, if you wanted to look at extension resisted, you could do a prone lumbar thoracic extension movement against gravity and measure how many they're able to do and look at the quality, etc. from there. If you wanted to look at the anterior muscles um, for the flexion movement, you can always get them to do um, sit-ups, either oblique or straightforward ones. If you wanted to look at general spinal stability, for example, you could do four-point kneeling work, like the classic sort of Superman type actions or whatnot. So now let's get through to our resisted rotations. So as a therapist, we're going to be stood a lot more anteriorly for this one. We're going to ask the patients to put their arms across their chest. We're going to guide them halfway to the direction we want so we can wind up those muscles specific. So if we're going to test right rotation, for instance, we'll ask Marie to come a little bit this way. So we're going to have our hands like so to block the movement. Now, when you're in clinic and you think which hand goes what way, what you want to think about is the lead shoulder and which direction that's going, because that's the one we want to block. So think if they're coming this way, this one's coming forward, I want to block that one. So we're going to put our hand overlapping the shoulder and their hand there to stop that occurring further. The other hand is going to sit behind the scapula. And from here we ask Marie to press into us and we say don't let me move you and we perform our pressure. And what I'm doing there is I'm pushing forward with this one and pulling with this one so I can provide that rotational force. For left rotation it's exactly the same idea. So just so you can see at home, I'm going to perch on the plinth here, but ideally you want an upright, good alignment so you're not stressing yourself. But it's exactly the same principle. So we see that the right shoulder is coming forwards because we're doing left rotation. We're going to block that movement. So we're going to have one hand here and our other hand is going to sit behind the scapula to stabilize. Same thing, don't let me move you and we provide that force. And you want to put that force, that pressure on very slowly like you're opening a tap to let that power come through gradually. Please don't just uh, sharply jar the patient or anything like that, um, because it doesn't give them a chance to join in. You might strain them, and you also won't get a real appreciation for the muscles at work. So when we're doing our resisted tests, we need to think about two things. We need to think about pain and power. If it's painful, then we're thinking it's going to be a contractile structure. And in terms of power, we're going to rate it on the Oxford scale between 0 and 5. So the key muscles that are involved in resisted thoracic rotation are the posterior muscles such as erector spinae, multifidus, and the semispinalis group, but also the anterior structures such as the internal and external obliques and the rectus abdominis. So let's summarize this video on resisted tests of the thoracic spine. Test resisted left and right rotation of the thoracic spine. Make sure you're aware of your handling technique for each test. Score the patient's strength from 0 to 5 on the Oxford scale and look for any pain when the resisted tests are performed. Consider any of the regular cheat patterns that were mentioned in the video so you know that you are accurately testing each movement. And that concludes our video on resisted testing for the thoracic spine. From here we recommend you check out our other videos for the thoracic spine such as testing active range of motion or passive range of motion. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you again soon at Clinical Physio.